Hey guys, here today with another Shirogorov knife video. Today we have in front of us a Stellar Sprint Run. Now, the Stellar is the newest model from Sergei Shirogorov. It debuted at uh, TKI Nashville, I want to say in May earlier this year. And uh, the, the knife really fulfills a lot of asks I've seen in the community. Um, we A lot of people have been really wanting a knife that fit in between the F95 size, which is a full-size knife, and the neon size, um, you know, both those being 4 inches and 3.5 respectively. And so we have a knife here that sits pretty at 3.75 inches of usable cutting length. We also have a very uh, interesting and novel uh, inset tab slash, you know, liner lock, whatever you want to call it, design, uh, something very similar to what we've seen uh, in the 111 and also in the uh, Custom Division Quantum Bronze as well. Uh, we'll take a look at those aspects later on, but uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the, the sprint runs. Um, we did see a sprint run Quantum earlier in 2019. Uh, the concept of the sprint runs is basically for the work, uh, allows the workshop to solicit feedback and get usage out of the knives so that they can make any uh, you know, changes for the production model since the production currently isn't out yet. Uh, you know, the customs just came out uh, again this earlier this year in May. So we're, they're really gearing up to produce the production seller, in my opinion. And I think the sprint runs really uh, allow for that. So really glad to have this piece in here today to take a look at and also to evaluate. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the specs of the knife. Um, let's first start with the measurements. Again, like I said before, this knife is looking at 3.75 inches of cutting length, which is, again, a size that a lot of people really like. Um, overall size open, you're looking at 8 and just under 8 and a fourth inches. And taking a look at the knife close, the handle is, let's see here, just between four and a half and four and three fourths inches. So of course, um, this knife is going to be right in between the size of a neon and an F95 here. If I would line them up pivot to pivot, you can see them getting longer in the back here. And when you have the knives open, of course, you see the same exact story. right here. So this knife really slots in very nicely in between the uh, two most popular models from the workshop, I would say. Now, the weight is actually a little bit closer to an F95 than a Neon, I would say, especially being a titanium handled knife. Uh, taking a look here, my <laughs> it's very hard to compare production knives. Uh, since unfortunately I don't have too many production knives these days. Um, the F7 is also not a good example either since uh, it is has a, a, a significantly thicker blade and uh, you know much more contouring. It is skeletonized though, but taking a look here, we have 4.9 ounces on the F7, and this I think is around 4.28 ounces for the Stellar. And again, bad example with this custom neon, but... Uh, 2.93 ounces with the neon hard here so you can see it, it tends closer to at uh, the f95 size than the neon in my experience now taking a look at the blade here we can see we have this beautiful uh, Bjorkman's twist damasteel now it seems that there are two patterns being used on this uh, there are actually two patterns being used on the quantum 2 as a matter of fact uh, there were 26 I believe done in Vinland and four of them in Berkman's Twist. Uh, with the Stellar, it seems to be 50-50, with half of them being done in Berkman's Twist and half of them being done in Vinland. Now, there are some changes, too, to the uh, etch. The etch on the uh, Stellar seems to be uh, a, a, something much closer to what we've seen in some of the Damasto customs. Now, Sergey doesn't use Damasto very often, but some of the recent 111s, I believe have had damn steel. I'm not sure if there are any other customs off the top of my head, but uh, what we see here is a much darker high contrast etch 
where the uh, stainless areas are also done to a much higher degree of polish. Now, a lot of people seem to really like this finish. Uh, I myself am not too partial to Damasteel, but I do admit that it looks very good. Um, very, very nice um, high polish on here. Uh, compare that to the Quantum and uh, pretty much any other Damasteel knife that the workshop has put out. Uh, it's been a much more uh, low contrast etch where the stainless parts are not nearly as shiny as well. So um, take it for its worth. I think both are fine, honestly. I don't mind too much, but uh, again, some people, those people who are really big fans of Damasteel really prefer a finish like this, I think. The Stellar Blade itself um, has a very wide sloping belly, um, very aggressive point, like uh, almost similar to what you see on the Quantum. Um, there also is a very long swedge running across the top here, and the swedge actually cuts very deep into the spine, as you can see here. Uh, there is not really much of a blade spine flat, as you can see. The, the spine goes up, and, and you would say that the, the spine is almost triangular in shape here. The extract cut, which uh, is very, uh, very Shirogorov-esque, in my opinion, especially on the uh, older production knives, has uh, seen a very minimalist uh, comeback here in the Stellar. Um, it, it's hard to describe. It is inset here. This isn't just a line that's milled into the, the knife, but I, I want to say that uh, it just doesn't appear as deep of an extract cut as what we would see on the F95. Uh, as you can see here, the, the angles on the side are also much more shallow. Um, I'm not really sure how I, how I uh, feel about this. You know, it's a subjective thing, of course. But personally, I feel like I do like the F95 uh, extract cut just a little bit better. The Ricasso is, is quite shallow compared to what you would see on Sergei's other knives. And uh, I do like it. It does uh, flow a little bit better with the uh, overall design of the knife. Uh, I really hate knives that have an overly large uh, choil or Ricasso area. So um, I really like how this is much closer to the contours of the knife itself. Now, if we take a look here, you can see on the top, we have a little patch of jimping here. I honestly don't really feel very confident with this jimping. As you can see, it's, it's, it's set back here, uh, so far back here on the blade, and uh, where the blade actually starts to dip into the handle that you really don't get too much purchase. Uh, combine that with the fact that this dip right here, this little curve on the blade, uh, which your thumb really wants to rest into when you're when you're grasping the knife or going for some detail cuts. The fact that there's no jimping here, I think is a, a little bit of a pretty big miss, actually. Uh, I really wish that the jimping extended up here, uh, given the fact that this jimping is quite functional, that little patch that you do have. Um, I can see that the jimping here uh, is actually meant to uh, aesthetically match up with the, uh, the handle when it's closed. Um, we've seen that on, like, the... Uh, Russian Hokkaido and uh, some other knives as well. So I would like to see that jimping extended on the production model. Now the flats, there are uh, some blade flats here. It's a little bit hard to see with that uh, high contrast Damaso etch, but uh, I do love the flats here. Uh, the fact that the flats aren't polished, um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, on, on the one hand, I actually do like how the pattern is continuous over the a length of the Damaso blade. I think that's a big win. However, there are uh, there were some action issues with this knife when it came out of the box. Um, had being Damasteel, you're going to have the layers of that knife, uh, the, the layers of that Damasteel, especially uh, get exposed when it gets etched. Damasteel, I believe, is not produced the same way that Damascus is, but uh, when you etch the steel, uh, there's going to be different textures uh, because of that etching and the two different types of steels. So it was quite a process wearing in this knife. Um, there, there were a couple things that I did to accelerate the creation of that detent track. Uh, overall, right now, the knife is incredibly smooth. I really love it, but it did take a lot of work. And I feel that if you were just flipping the knife open and closed uh, heavily every day, it, it'll, t it'll take a, quite a long time to wear in that detent track. So... Um, I do understand the reasoning for that though. Uh, as you can see here, another thing that uh, uh, perhaps a lot of people don't like is the fact that the detent track is a little bit exposed here 
on the design when it's open. Um, honestly, for me, not a deal killer. Much better than having an exposed detent hole, in my opinion. Much, much better. But uh, that is a, a quirk that um, some people do, uh, do mind. Now, moving on to the handle, you can see here that we have a full titanium handle. The milling pattern on it has these uh, lines going across it, completely horizontal lines, with some uh, wide cross hatching here on the back half of the knife. Now, the custom division version of the Stellar is available. It de debuted at uh, Oral Expo uh, just a few weeks ago from, uh, actually, I want to say like last week uh, from the, the date of this video. And the milling pattern on it, the cross hatching, instead of being on the rear half, it actually is on the, four, on the uh, front half. And it's uh, the exact mirror opposite of the milling on the sprint run. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, Sergey likes to do that kind of stuff where uh, there'll just be different patterns in the same vein where you know they'll match up and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the screws on here, the backspacer and, and the clip as well are anodized in this uh, gray color. I want to say it's very similar to the colors that we've seen on the RJ uh, Martin collaboration, the Russian Overkill, and also on the 111, or sorry, 110 Kickstop Anchor Gray. It's really that grayish color. I believe on the Custom Division, um, the screws are a little bit different. I think they're kind of a dual anodized bronze and gray, and the handle itself is also anodized in a very subtle bronze color as well. Uh, so there are some color differentiations between the Sprint Run and the Custom Division, but overall the, the designs are, are very similar. The handles themselves as well, I really love the contouring here. While this part is quite flat, there is some very generous contouring, and this contouring is, uh, is is a little bit different than what we see on most other sure gloves. Uh, usually when you think of sure grub contouring, you think of kind of a 3D uh, con convex curve, but there are a couple concave curves here on the top and the bottom that I think uh, complement the knife very well aesthetically. I really like these sloping cuts and how they catch the light. Um, you also have this chamfer on the back here. I think a lot of people were really worried um, when the first uh, kind of teaser shots of the Stellar came out uh, the light was not favorable on the rear portion, and it really made the knife. It, even though you know the the back of this knife has a very sloping butt that feel that you know feels very comfortable in the hand, but when this curve is not illuminated properly, um, it can make that that drop off seem uh, just that much more drastic. So um, fortunately, in person, I think the overall uh, aesthetics and design of the handle are not only very comfortable but look very nice. Um, but that curve did worry a couple people when the uh, first teaser picks came out on the custom Stellar. Now, the lanyard hole on the back here is something similar to what we've seen on the RJ Martin uh, Russian Overkill collaboration, and it was actually one of my gripes about the knife, especially since Shergraf has had such a great history uh, kind of integrating lanyard holes into the design of the knife. So having this large hole here on the back, I do understand it does add some kind of visual flair or some kind of point of interest on the rear of the handle, but I really would have preferred a traditional Shura Groff style lanyard hole, uh, kind of integrated into the backspacer uh, for, for those knives that do have backspacers. And moving on to the other side of the knife, uh, the clip here as well, um, the clip, I understand what Sergio is going for here. This design of the clip, especially with this uh, the sloping right here, is a throwback to the original F95 uh, clips that I, I want to say that they were bent clips. Um, they had a very similar shape and style to this. And it, it's very curious here since I, I feel like Sergio you know, wanted people to know that it was a milled clips and he wanted to obviously have uh, a unique clip design, but this very sudden transition point here with the clip, uh, and also this front portion right here, while it's not, uh, I, I don't think it's a, a, you know, a horrible design, I, I would have liked to see perhaps maybe this portion of the clip design kind of extended out a little bit more. I do appreciate the milling here on the clip. This had changed since the uh, Custom Quantum 
Uh, Sergey likes Abby's uh, textures on custom division knives uh, to kind of differentiate them from the customs as well. Um, and I do like that. It's, it's actually variable in the tightness of the diagonal milling here. So very interesting. The clip also stands off um, uh, a good amount from the knife, which makes it very easy to put on, uh, kind of clip onto your pants. Uh, this flare is actually quite nice when you combine that with this recess. Um, when I first saw that recess, I was reminded of the two screw F3, uh, the old F3 uh, clip design, which was just a pain to put in your pocket. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad to say that the retention on this clip is excellent and uh, you know, clipping it on and also removing it from your pockets is also not a chore as well. So very good clip design. Uh, but I do wish the aesthetics had, were, you know, had changed a little bit. And, uh, this is something that is also true on the custom model as well. As you can see on the rear here, we have, uh, a blind screwed handle, uh, just like the custom. This results in a very clean show side, which I, I like very much. Uh, but I think this is also another reason why having a, a lanyard hole integrated into the uh, the backspacer only and, and not the handle as well is, is really nice. Um, you know, with this hole here that you have to accommodate for, the clip has to kind of get pushed forward or, you know, it can't really be, get pushed back in a design like this. And, uh, you know, kind of just having them next to each other, not really too sure. Uh, it'd be nice if it just had one screw uh, on the back here, but um, that one I won't fault as much as, uh, you know, some other aspects such as the jimping and, and the clip, in my opinion. There is a uh, quite extensive milling done underneath here. It looks very simplistic here, but actually, uh, as you get underneath the clip, the more complex it looks. A little bit hard to uh, actually, yeah, I can't even capture it, but uh, when you take this clip off, it actually, the, the milling underneath here is, is, is very interesting the shape. Um, I can't... <laughs> Sucks because I can't really show it to you, but uh, you're gonna have to trust me on that one. Uh, moving on to the backspacer here. Um, really nice touches on the backspacer. Uh, I really like how uh, the backspacer, it, it doesn't have that uh, that uh, kind of faux floating effect that you would see on the Quantum, but I do like these little notches and uh, the scalloping here that's done on the side of the, the notches on the backspacer. I think it looks really nice. Uh, additionally, when you take a look at the butt end of the backspacer, these uh, gaps that are created and just the contouring on the, the tail end of this knife is, is excellent. Um, we have a knife here that uh, the, the blade doesn't really get captured like it does on the Neon Zero. A lot of people really like that aspect, but uh, the fact that the backspacer is kind of um, floating on the tail end and the blade is pretty much right up next to that, uh, I think makes for a really nice effect. Lastly, uh, taking a look at the internals of the knife, the knife does run on, let's see if I can capture it here, single row roller bearings. I think that mark is actually up here in front. There we go. Single row roller bearings like the custom division. Uh, and the milling here is quite extensive. If you take a look, we have a uh, two-step milling here. Uh, that also has a lot of lines running through it as well, even right here where the back spacer cutout starts. Um, you can see that aligned, that diagonal milling. Uh, and that also continues on the inside here as well, the Sugar of logo uh, being here. Uh, there Again, there is no Custom Division logo or Blade logo as well, so the logo has been located on the inside here. It's a very extensive milling, and as you can see, uh, the inset tab lock, uh, this lock is anchored into the knife with two screws and a centering post as well. So with three points of contact on this, uh, this liner, uh, it's very secure and also very repeatable. So having to uh, disassemble the knife for maintenance and reassembling it, you having those three points of contact results in a very solid lockup for the knife. So very impressive there. And the lock bar itself, you know, um, working around the logo area, the, the, the fit is incredibly tight. I'm very impressed with that. And that's pretty much it for the knife. Oh, actually, I um, wanted to talk a little bit about the detent ramp. Um, detent ramps are pretty much standard now on all these newer models. And even some of the older models have been receiving uh, kind of, uh, you know, mid-life, mid-cycle improvements. Uh, the F3 and S 
uh, being one of them where the older ones did not have detent ramps, but the newer ones uh, seem to, to uh, be having detent ramps. Um, the Stellar, of course, has a detent ramp, and a lot of people were faulting the detent ramp for the uh, kind of odd closing mechanics, where uh, it would just kind of, uh, it's hard to explain, kind of fall shut on them, uh, or they weren't able to shut it in one uh, motion with one hand. The Stellar doesn't have that problem, and the quant the reason the Quantum had that was because the flipper tab was so low profile, it didn't really catch on your hand um, by the time the detent ball was on the blade. Um, the Stellar, with a smaller profile flipper tab uh, than the F95, while it does while it is a smaller profile than the F95, you don't have that problem since uh, when you start closing the knife, you're gonna stop, your thumb's gonna stop on uh, the flipper tab, and by that point, the ball is already on the blade. That's actually the problem. For the Quantum, when your finger hit the flipper tab, uh, the detent ball was not on the blade flat. So when you let go, the knife would just fall open like that. But on the Stellar, uh, the, the detent ball is on the blade when the flipper tab hits your thumb. So you can go ahead and just keep on continuing to close the knife. So uh, happy to report that that problem isn't there. Um, the stop pin design, and this again is, is very technical, but I have noticed that uh, with these designs here, uh, you start seeing these uh, odd kind of blade tangs where it interfaces with the stop pin. Um, I think the reason why Sergey moved to this design, and a lot of makers are doing it too, is to have the stop pin be enclosed uh, by not only the uh, front of the blade, but also on the top as well, creates a more secure lockup. Uh, but for that reason, the flipper tab or sorry, the stop pin has been moved uh, sign significantly downwards, which results in this blade shape right here. Um, with the F95, you can see the stop pin is, is much higher, uh, but that means that you only have the front face of the blade to stop against the stop pin. So um, that trend seems to be continuing, um, started with the Quantum and is continuing with the Stellar there. Uh, but yeah, overall, what are my thoughts on the quant uh, sorry, the Stellar? Um, the Stellar, I think, is a very excellent design. There are a couple things I don't like about it. Again, I think these are things that are not inherent too much to the design, except perhaps maybe the lanyard hole and the clip. But uh, things such as the, the jimping and the detent track, um, I, I really wish uh, weren't exposed, and I really wish there were more jimping. If I would rate them on, if I would have to pick an issue to get resolved, or two issues, I would say. Um, I would say the jimping needs to get added. That's something that really needs to get seen on the production. Um, I understand, like, you know, on a knife such as uh, the Neon, especially the Neon Zero with this type of jimping, this is a smaller knife meant for, uh, you know, office carry or, um, you know, less hard use task. So, you know, really effective jimping here maybe might not be the most necessary, but having it on a full-size knife, and, and I really would say that this is something that people want to daily drive. This is something that's closer to the F95 than the Neon. Uh, you really have to have that nice jimping here. And uh, having that on the production short grubs, uh, but not the limited versions, um, is something that I, I did really miss, actually. So I'm, I'm really glad that my F7 has that jimping, uh, it being a custom, but I'm hoping that there will be jimping on the production. Uh, the clip design, pretty much here to stay. Uh, you either like it or you don't. Not really going to complain too much about that. The detent track, I really wish that they extended the handle just a little bit. I mean, as you can see here, the it's just just so little that it is, is exposed. The handle could just been extended a couple millimeters. Really wish that the, that uh, was not the case, but I won't complain about it too much since the hole isn't exposed. And uh, again, the lanyard hole. Again, it's just part of the design. I honestly don't mind too much, but I know uh, it, it just, I feel like it just would have been better if it was uh, just on the backspacer itself. Things I do really like about the knife, the size is excellent. Um, personally, I really never had a problem carrying an F95 size knife, but uh, I know a lot of people wanted a, a size that was smaller than that without going to the Neon, of course. So I really like that. Um, the ergos of the knife as well. Um, this sloping backwards back design uh, really makes the knife sit differently in the hand, and it's in a very good way, actually. Um, comparing that to the F95, which uh, doesn't drop off nearly as fast, 
Um, it, it feels different, and I always thought the F95 had an incredibly excellent ergonomics, but I, I have to say that I, I do prefer the Stellar a little bit more, I think, in that regard. The, the clip is excellent. It carries very well. Uh, the life, the knife, you know, being lighter than an F95 size is, uh, is a very big positive. And, uh, the flipper tab and the action is excellent. Um, you know, this one in particular, because it's damn still had that action problem when we first got it. I think they're all like that, but uh, I, I don't foresee that being an issue on the custom division and the production as well. So uh, the flipping action is really nice. Uh, not having a lock bar, a lot of people, uh, you know, especially people new to the knife world, uh, they have issues uh, touching the lock bar. So having that inset uh, tab lock will prevent those kind of issues as well. So overall, really some really nice aspects about the Stellar that I think will make it a really big home run, especially when that custom vision, or sorry, when that uh, production version finally comes out. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really excited to be able to make a video on uh, the newest model. And uh, I, again, I'm very eagerly awaiting the production version um, kind of as a, uh, final note, not really sure if they're going to go with titanium on the production or not. Uh, you know, being it a liner lock or inset liner lock, we might see composite materials in the production. Um, in fact, there is going to be a carbon fiber version of the Stellar at, uh, FNBA and just a few days, uh, from the making of this video. So I actually would say that the production version will be in carbon fiber. I would not expect titanium. Um, but that does open up the door to, uh, multiple color options as well, which a lot of people really like. So, uh, that will be really cool actually. Um, that's again. All right. I'm done with this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.